Hi, I'm a research scientist working at Riken, Japan. I am also a pediatrician, kids' doctor. I used to work in one of the largest and best children's hospital in Japan. And because of that, we were often asked to look after very, very sick kids from other hospitals from all over Japan. And when we have a such consultation, we always think about how we can transport those patients to our hospital. Because always those critically ill patients, it is a tough job to transport them. What is critically ill condition? When we are in normal condition or spending our daily life, for example, when we are walking or eating or thinking, or even when we are sleeping, we use some amount of energy. And when we are in healthy condition, the energy supply and energy demand is well balanced. But when we become sick, the energy supply shrinks and therefore, this balance is damaged. And critically ill condition is one of those severe cases. Modern medicine tries to somehow recover this energy supply. And we use drugs or some devices, or sometimes we use human resources to recover this energy supply. And that is why patients who are critically ill has a lot of tubes or a lot of devices attached on their body. And when we are trying to transport these patients, we usually use an ambulance or a um, medical helicopter. And if you have been in either of those vehicles, you should know that how noisy and how bumpy it is inside them. One of the most informative signs we retrieve from the patient is the sound made by the patient. That is the heart beating sound, or it is the breathing sound of the patient. And in those vehicles, it is very, very difficult to listen to those sounds. And that makes us very difficult to evaluate the patient, which is also making us very difficult to transport them. And when we have a difficulty in the patient of the breathing system, we often intubate them. Intubation means putting a tube inside the trachea to protect their airways. When the transporting system is very bumpy, in the worst scenario, those tubes will be dislocated, and that may easily kill the patient. So when we decide that the patient is too sick, sometimes we have to give up transporting them. And that means that those patients have to remain in the original hospital, which also means that we can't give them proper medicine or treatment. And that is a very sad thing. So one morning, it was just after my long nighttime shift in the ICU. I was so tired and I was so sleepy. I took a cup of coffee and returned to the staff office and sat down and found a medical journal on the desk. And that journal was not even the latest issue. And I did what I usually don't do. I think I was, it was because I was so tired. I causally took that journal and flipped through the uh, journal with no reason. And one article jumped into my eyes. That article claimed that primates can enter hibernation. Primates. This primate was called the fat-tailed dwarf lemur. And Dr. Catherine Dousman's group, they found this primate were entering hibernation in Madagascar. 
it is already surprising to know that they found a hibernator in a perfect tropical area. But for me, what was striking is that they found a primate which can enter hibernation. Hibernation, this word is originated in Latin. It means spending winter. And in Japanese, we write it winter sleep. And when the animal enter hibernation, they usually reduce their metabolism very, very low. And because of that, they lose their body temperature. And in other words, they lose their energy demand. And in some severe cases, they even lost their energy demand down to 1% than usual. 1%. And please recall the energy budget uh, for, of healthy people. When we are healthy, the energy supply and energy demand are balanced. And when we become sick, the energy supply reduces. And modern medicine, it tries somehow to recover this energy supply. But don't you think there is another way to balance this again? If we were able to reduce the energy demand safely, we could take another balance again. And this is what exactly the hibernators are doing during hibernation. So when I looked, run into this article, all of a sudden I started to think that if we can induce hibernation to humans, and if we could induce hibernation to the patients, that means that we don't need any intensive care dur during transportation. And that will allow us to transport these patients to our hospital, which also means we might save their lives. So on that very day, I decided to step into the basic research field to discover or to develop the hibernation therapy. And I applied to a doctor course on that very day. And since then, it has been more than 10 years. And now I can tell you that Medical transportation is not the only application of human hibernation. Now, I belong to a lab called Retinal Regeneration. Most of the members are making uh, retinal tissues from human iPS cells. And if we were able to induce hibernation to those tissues, that means that we can preserve them stock them, the tissues, and then mass production of those tissues will be possible. That would also mean to reduce the cost dramatically of regenerative medicine. And this is not only for human iPS-derived retinal regeneration, but it can be also applied to classic transplantation medicine. Did you know that when we remove the heart from the brain dead donors, we can only have four hours to put those heart into the new body, four hours. And I believe that if we can induce hibernation to those tissues, this limitation will be also extended. And medicine is not only the case. I think human hibernation it could also take us to space. Now I know many people are trying to escape Earth, uh, going to the moon or Mars or maybe further. Please think about how they're going out. In the spacecraft, there are only a limited place to put the resources. So I believe that everyone in this room will agree that if we were able to reduce the metabolism of the crew, that could work, that will be very helpful to increase the number of the crews or to uh, efficiently use the resource in the rocket. So I think, at least for going to Mars, human hibernation will be very helpful. And if we want to go further, human hibernation is mandatory. And for Earth lovers or 
who don't want to leave Earth, I can give you another application. I think human hibernation, it could be a time machine. Some scientists believe that hibernators suppress their aging processes during hibernation. And if that is true, if you are in a 100-year hibernation, 100 years later, you'll wake up in the same age as you entered hibernation. And every other thing is 100 years old. And that is going to the future. So I think if everything works well, human hibernation will take us to the future. It could be a time machine. Now, when I started my hibernation research, I had to choose what kind of animal to study. And there are a lot of attractive hibernating animals, like bears, bats, squirrels, or hamsters. But I didn't choose them. Instead, I chose mice. And mice, they, are, they have a lot of advantages from those hibernators. For example, they are easy to get. The, the availability is very high. And genetically engineering is very easy in these animals. And mice, they do not enter hibernation, but they do enter a condition called daily torpor. It is a very short version of hibernation. And three years ago, our group reported uh, a very stable method to induce this daily torpor in mice. And using that system, we now discovered that daily torpor share some function with hibernation. And we are going further now. With my collaborator in Tsukuba University, Takeshi Sakurai and Toru Takahashi, we are now trying to make a hibernation-like mice by stimulating the brain directly of those animals. So I think we are taking a steady step forward to induce hibernation to non-hibernators, of course, including humans. So far, I have been talking about how this fantastic function of hibernation could be used to us, I mean used to human or the human society. But recently, I noticed that there are another aspect of studying hibernation. As I mentioned, some hibernators only use 1% of their energy during hibernation. That means that they did not use the 99% of oxygen or metabolism, and it also means that they didn't die even they only used 1% of the metabolism. So in that 1%, I think there are some essential function which we still don't know for living. So I think hibernation, they will let us survive through medicine, and Hibernation, it could take us to space or even to the future. But also, hibernation, it could answer to one of the most fundamental questions ever asked, what is life? Thank you so much.